Good evening, my name is Jonathan Skinner from the University of Roehampton. And what I'd like to do today in this pre-taster recording materials for a lecture ahead on intangible cultural heritage is to try and elaborate on ideas of heritage and intangible cultural heritage that we've talked about in previous sessions and to include the Rolling Stones. They're singing Sympathy for the Devil and they've been a band that have been around since 1962-1963 and the image on my left is them playing in Twickenham Stadium in the summer of 2018 and what's interesting about 2018 when the band got together Charlie Watts, Mick Jagger and others is that they were playing exactly 55 years later to the day from one of their first bands on Eel Pie Island, uh, just next to Twickenham, which is an island that used to have a, a hotel on it where there used to be lots of late night parties, uh, bands playing, you got a ticket as you walked over a, a bridge to the, to the hotel, uh, late night bands playing The Who, Genesis, Pink Floyd, Hawkwind, Eric Clapton, and uh, here, the Rolling Stones had one of their first sort of um, week-long gigs. So they were, to some extent, com commemorating their their existence. Um, and a lot of the people in the audience had nostalgia for what they had grown up with and what they'd first seen in this Southwest uh, rhythm and blues um, beat that was developing in London in the 1960s as a, a contrast to um, the more li libertines of East London. So there's a harder um, edged sound to it in this counterculture. As you can see, the rockers uh, still rocking have aged, uh, weathered slightly, and yet poignantly, they're still dancing with Mr. D. They're still walking and strutting their paths. Mick Jagger at the front um, with his, um, his distinctive dancing walk uh, and his characteristic lips that were turned into an icon for the Rolling Stones, perhaps more of a reference to Kali, the Hindu goddess of death and time than to his actual um, lips himself. And what was interesting seeing this um, event was the the, the build-up to it the, the 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 day before the evening as the the thousands of people gathered uh to the twickenham stadium uh there were a lot of people going to Epi island walking around twickenham and trying to find venues where the stones had played and performed so there was a sort of heritage commemoration of them and their youth and one group of people um that were marching through the streets, wearing a lot of uh, stones, uh, memorabilia, also flying, uh, waving Argentinian flags, were a group of Rolingas. And these are fans of the stones um, who saw the, the stones and, and identified with this counterculture uh, when the music was banned by the Argentine and Junta in the 60s. And to some extent, they continue to show their, their allegiance and follow them internationally. So it, it's interesting seeing how potentially um, rock music, uh, as Andy Bennett suggests, can be considered um, a form of heritage. The digitally remastered labels and CDs are virtual intangible cultural heritage. I've already tried to elaborate on ideas of cultural heritage linked to the idea of patrimony. Um, fade out the stones. Uh, I've already identified <coughs> heritage um, in association with patrimony, the idea of inheriting goods through the family um, line, linked also to nationalism, nationalization, the heritage and wealth of the nation. And we've heard uh, earlier how 
there was an expansion in the late 20th century um, with UNESCO recognizing intangible cultural heritage. That is the oral traditions and expressions language as diff different vehicles of intangible cultural heritage, performing arts, social practices, rituals, festival events, so carnival um, can constitute intangible cultural heritage, knowledge, practices, craftsmanship. And to some extent then we have, not sanctioned by the UNESCO uh, yet, but we have here the Rolling Stones as an example of uh, a sort of uh, an embodied uh, intangible cultural heritage. What I'd like to add to this is that there's a sort of a virtuality to this um, heritage. And to complement um, Andy Bennett's ideas, we have Barbara Kirschenblatt's Gimlet um, talking about heritage as something that is being reanimated from the past. Um, there is a sense then of heritage uh, is something that has passed, as has a sense of obs obsoleteness around it, is outdated or outmoded, perhaps even dead or defunct, but is being recreated in a process of exhibition, uh, knowledge, performance, concert, or museum display. So this is about heritage uh, of about the past uh, in the, the present. Um, heritage as a mode of cultural production in the present that has recourse to the past. So attending the Rolling Stones concert in the summer of 2018, people were identifying and thinking back to 1963. A lot of t-shirts were being bought that showed um, the various band members as they started off and as they were playing um, uh, on their, their, their tour, um, their, their global tour um, in the sort of 50, 50 years later. So heritage is something new to the present. It's something about giving second life to things as they become transformed, a second life as exhibits of themselves. And here we have ex, um, these people exhibiting themselves, performing, giving life to their songs and people trying to visit and see the concert um, whilst they, they can. So there's a value added dimension to this, to this um, merchandising, to this marketing, to this, this industry. There's a value that's being um, attached to this pastness. Heritage prevents something from completely disappearing then or becoming obsolete. It transforms, uh, it, it, it um, creates um, products for export. And it also has, to some extent, this virtuality attached to it. Um, there's a sort of sense of here-ness, but there's also a sense of, um, of presence from absence. And this is an interesting proposition that Keshenblatt Kishenblatt you know, talks about. And it calls for a rethink on ideas of authenticity, invention, and simulation. Our staged authenticity comes up with Meccano in the tourism context. So here we have perhaps um, a, an hallucination taking place. There's a hearness about heritage, and yet it's about absence um, of the part from the past. Um, there's a virtuality about the memory and the spaces of memory, the lieu de mémoire, um, as Pierre Nora calls them, that suggest that, that memory needs some sort of prosthesis um, to, to engage with the past. You might even say in a tourist context, we increasingly travel to uh, these destinations to actually experience the virtual. And Gimbert talks about an example of where you can travel to New Zealand to stay in, in accommodation that, that, such as a historic jail. Or, for example, some of my uh, writings, uh, you can go to Oxford uh, and it's been the Oxford jail has been turned into a boutique hotel. And you can see the rooms, um, you can see an original room as a cell, and then you can stay in, in a room that's been modified or uh, as two cells, not wall knocked down, uh, and you get the, the, the comfort and luxury of the hotel room, but you get the, the heritage of the, the destination. And you also have then this sort of subjunctive um, aspect to the, the leisure encounter to uh, a role play, to engaging with this place, as in, what if I'd been a prisoner? What, did it, what would it have been like if I'd been there? Likewise, 
uh, for me, uh, missing the 60th generation by slip. Um, it's about trying to connect to that and think about, well, what if I had been someone who grew up in this um, 60s generation? So it's interesting how we can engage with the concept of heritage. It's interesting how it becomes politicized. Um, heritage is also ideological. Uh, Nuala Johnson's work from Queen's University of Belfast, she looks at heritage um, institutions and houses um, and is interested in how they engage with time and space, the politics of heritage, how a, a product is, is framed through the heritage lens. There's not just the physical building, there's also the conceptualization of nature and culture around it. It's more than just the simple recovery of the past. It's about how people in the present engage with space and time in a, quite often a very strategic and carefully designed fashion for the, the, uh, the, the tourist gaze. So the historian and critic of heritage, David Lowenthal, has a nice turn of phrase when he writes that heritage distills the past into icons of identity. And this is a, a simplification of the past. Uh, it's one that allows the, the past to be played with by the customer. It's one that establishes a, a sort of a capitalist consumption as a sort of simple narrative, perhaps even a false or um, in what is now the post-Trumpian era, uh, the, the sort of the fake news um, dimension. Johnson suggests that there's a dichotomy between the true history and the fake heritage um, in these um, nuances around heritage. And yet others would suggest that, it, that it's blurred, it's more playful um, and heritage doesn't necessarily distinguish between um, the, the staged authenticity, the real authenticity and the playful nature of authenticity. Again, to return to John Ari, for this concept of post-tourism where the tourist is not so much um, thinking about this, this quest for the authentic um, product or experience, it's more about uh, enjoyment. And that to some extent is, is where we have this um, enjoyment of the, this heritage complex. Um, different people coming to the Stones con concert for very different reasons in 2018. What's interesting uh, to, to elaborate on is how um, the Stones met the, the Beatles in uh, Richmond in the, the same um, era as these bands were, were starting out. Uh, and in the lecture, we'll elaborate on how Rod Stewart found fame and fortune outside Richmond Station. We'll hear about the Craw Daddy um, Club uh, as one of the first venues to, to, to sort of to showcase um, these bands uh, at a time and a place where it was the Beatles um, coming over and watching as an audience the, the first sort of, of these lineups of the Rolling Stones. So this hopefully will be a, a, an interesting um, and very musical version of, um, of intangible cultural heritage.